Hello and uh, welcome to this talk, which is going to be a live reverse engineering of Android malware. Um, my name is Axel Abril. I work for Fortinet as a security researcher there. I'm focusing mainly on uh, mobile malware and uh, malware for Internet of Things. And also, besides that, I'm uh, the lead organizer of Phone CTF, that is a Capture the Fair flag, which is located in the south of France. Uh, if you happen to be there, you are welcome to be there. And the CTF is also dedicated to uh, smart devices, so this is going to be, again, uh, mobile devices and um, Internet of Things. So, um, actually, I only have uh, this slide. Um, this is um, the, um, the sample we are going to reverse now. Um, this is really fully live, except that um, it's my second recording because the first was just total crap. Okay, um, uh, it crashed in the middle, well, whatever, okay? Um, but this sample is a live, I think it's from yesterday or something like that, so it's gonna be really fresh for you, okay? Uh, when you when you see this. I was thinking of doing some other sample before, but I thought, oh, come on, I want some, something spicy, something really, really fresh, so let's get, and get this one. The tools I'm gonna use is a mod SF, this one there, uh, maybe not the Excalibur this time, but um, another time anyway, it's a very good tool, so have a look at it. And this is my own tool, so of course, very good, uh, Droid Lizis. Um, also, um, might be uh, useful to have a look in, into these, so go and have a look at those URLs, download um, the, the applications and try to use them because they're really helpful for reverse engineering. Then, um, of course, it's the contact information. Well, if you want to contact me, you can use uh, the old um, email fashion way. This is, works perfectly well as long as you don't do any typo in my um, last name, okay? Uh, otherwise, um, well, of course, you can um, resort to Twitter and send me a message there, and I'll be very happy to answer if I can. So let's uh, now go on to uh, the reverse engineering. So this is the sample. I'm just checking for you the hash. There it is. And I'm going to use it in MobSF. MobSF has been launched already on my platform. And it is there. We select the APK and upload it and analyze it. Uh, what I really like there is that I don't have to, to go and share my sample with an external website. Um, that's great. Um, in case, you know, there might be uh, some risks with sending it over or some corporate security rules, everything here stays uh, local on my laptop, which is something uh, which is really interesting. So uh, the, um, the web user interface is absolutely beautiful. Um, I really like that. Uh, of course, what we are interested in is that uh, it helps you, it helps you and me um, reverse the sample um, in, a, in a correct way. So here I see the package name, tech, teach, sorry, teach report crane. Uh, it's always interesting to keep this in mind. Security score 5 out of 100. Yeah, this is probably crap because anyway, this is a malicious sample and uh, the security score, uh, well, I don't know if it should be high or low, but we would perhaps we would expect more detection uh, trackers as well. Um, uh, the signer certificate, we see it's reusing one of the standard Android certificates. Um, it's using V1 scheme, okay, this is the old scheme, now we have a better, so it's insecure. The app is vulnerable, but we don't care if it's a malware, right? The permissions, I really most of the time don't care with that. To have a look at that when I'm doing malware analysis, I don't find this interesting. Now, Android API, so it's doing BIS64 encoding, okay. Um, 
but actually this is done in third-party SDKs. Flurry is for app um, ads, app loading, I think same, Amazon, well, you know, Flurry, there we go. So this is not really a core of um, the application. Same for that, I'm scrolling down. Oh, dynamic class and Dex loading. Oh, this is interesting. Because Dex loading, Dex are Dalvik executables on Android, so it means that we probably have the potential for loading dynamically a Dex. Okay, so where is it doing that? Well, you can just click there and it will tell you where. And actually it highlights the name of Dex class loader, which is the class which is used to, um, to do this uh, dynamic loading. And now let's have a look at where this is used. Oh, it is used in here. Now, um, when I see this, we see that this is junk code. Okay, it's just a computation, but it's not used afterwards. We see that the Dex class loader instance is constructed in here. Okay, interesting. So the first uh, the first argument of a Dex class loader, I know that it is the path to the file which holds the Dex executable. So this is interesting for us because uh, if I get that path, then I can uh, get the Dalvik executable which is loaded, and that's the payload, okay? And then we can analyze that. This means that this sample very probably, well, it is packed and probably there's nothing interesting in this APK apart from the fact that it is unpacking this Dex. So now what we want to do, what we want to, um, to go quickly at finding is how we can find this payload. Now uh, I'm a little bit helped here because um, I have already dealt with something which is very similar in a sample like two or three months ago. So it resembles so much what I have already seen. I know what it's going to look like afterwards. And also the fact that, uh, well, it's the second edition of this, um, of this uh, uh, recording, right? So I'm gonna use Jeb here because uh, in here, it's you know just a web API. I can't have a look at the cross references. So um, it's not really cool for that. Um, I'm gonna load the sample, it's this one, okay, tells me the uh, APK is big, okay. There it is. And now it was in class MNEQ. So I can have, try and find that one. MNEQ. And I'm going to try and find it. There it is. And teach report crane. This is correct. I'm going to decompile it by hitting the tab button in Jeb. Jeb is the decompiler I use here. Okay, and it opens this pane over there. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. Come on. Okay, uh, and here I'm going to search for Dex class loader. And there it is in Drink Acquire. So we said that this one is the Dex path. So now I'm going to work my way up the call stack to see where I can read the value of this Dex path and find what is the path for, for that Dex I am interested in. So cross references, you hit the, the X button. Okay, so here Dex path. I'm going to do this a little bit quickly. This is the second argument over here.
And here you see that it's no longer part of the argument, so it means that it is valued inside the method. So this is the first occurrence, so we can have a look in this one and see if it is constructing the value. So this is junk code. We can look inside there. We've got lots of junk code yet again again, except here where it deals with a path, so it's interesting. We go here, junk code, and this is constructing a file. So yeah, this is probably the path and probably the file name. So the file name over here, there it is. It's this one, w.json. Okay, we've got that. Now, um, actually, we could have done this with mob sf. Okay, um, so we can switch to the dynamic analyzer and run the and run it, and then we'll see actually um, uh, this um, this file name. So here, what is really nice with mob sf is that it is actually so I've got. Um, an emulator. It is automatically uh, installing my application in the emulator and installing Frida tools. So this is uh, really nice stuff. And then you've got this interface. So on a small screen, this is horrible. And even on a big screen, you really need a really big screen there. Okay. Um, so we'll have to work this out. Uh, however, I'm not interested in SSL pinning. So I can keep those, but it's not really interesting. I can load um, hooks in here and actually type in and put my own Frida hooks in there. So this is good. I'm going to actually start instrumentation. And when I start instrumentation, it tells me instrumentation successful. And also what I really like to have a look at is live API monitor. And now things are going to pile into there, and this is cool because you see we get the arguments for each function. So base64, and well, we get the input arguments. It would have been even nicer to get the output arguments, but now, well, we're going to have a look at where it loses text class loader. And look at this. We had, sorry, it's, it's shift there. We have the the name of the JSON file with the complete path over there. Data, user, zero, tech, and etc. So we're going to grab that. So it's running in the emulator. Um, ADB shell, the data, data, and we said the name of the app is that. It was in dynamic opt dex. It's this one. So I'm going to copy that someplace where I can grab it easily outside of the emulator, let's say in, on the SD card. I exit and adb pool SD card w.json and grab that. Now if I do, do this, it tells me it is indeed a Dalvik executable. Cool. Uh, actually, I'm going to put this in JEB to do some uh, reverse engineering of the payload with, because all the interesting stuff, right, is in this Dalvik executable, of course. Uh, but JEB doesn't, uh, most of the time, or maybe it was only with prior version, doesn't like when um, the name is not ending with the, a dot text, so I'm going to rename it and put it someplace I can access it for widget. Um, there we go. And now I'm going to close this. And this is my dex. I could save it, but there we go. And we're going to analyze that. Meanwhile, Actually, I don't know that much about that DEX, okay? So I'm going to use actually my tool, Droid Lizis, to get a first overview of what this DEX is doing. So the input file and the output is just the directory where I will 
put all the report kind of um, on, on the laptop. Because as you can see, well, you know, we get loads of classes. Where should we start? It's a little bit difficult first to, to know. So it's processing. Um, it's a bit slow there because um, I have mob SF which is running. I've got lots of things. I'm going to start to stop this for now. Okay. By the way, I'm not analyzing um, the text with mob SF because, well, it only supports HKs, but not direct uh, analysis of um, text files. So this is the output of droid -lysis. So those are very long, lengthy strings, but. Here, this is interesting. We see the features that are exposed. It's, it obviously tries to abuse probably accessibility services. That's one of the things actually this, um, this malware is doing. So this is an important part there. So we're going to try and find which class is actually um, dealing with accessibility services. And for that, um, we can have a look in the report. So the report, uh, the details of the report is called details.md and I'm simply going to grab um, something like accessibility and details and see where that happens. And we see that it happens very often in well, plenty of classes, but for instance, acquire alert C. Opinion, sorry, opinion acquire alert C. And we can have a look in here. So I said opinion. Um, Opinion acquire uh, alert, and now I need to explain class C. Those are sub paths. Um, there it is. Can you compile that one? My laptop is heating up. Okay, um, so it's this is the class, and you indeed see that there are plenty of references with accessibility events here and there. Okay, and for instance, this one is dealing with accessibility events and things like that, and you can see quite obviously that it is there are obfuscated strings. Now, let's try and deobfuscate a little bit those strings to make sense out of those. So, um, this is obfuscated string, and this is deobfuscate. And we see it performs base64 decoding. Then this Oh, this is just a uh, string to byte array conversion. Not interesting. This, um, oh, this calls this one which is there. And this is decryption. Okay, so I'm going to call this decrypt. And to be nice, I'm going to call this one slightly differently. Do decrypt. Let go. And Oh, so this is the ciphertext. This is the result, so this is the plain text. Um, we see it as doing some XOR with, uh, well, with uh, this table in there, which is A. It's over here. This is swapping things. So 
So anyway, where is A constructed? It is constructed from here, from the constructor. So basically we can say that this is more or less kind of a key. And this is something that prepares the key. And in here, the key, well, the key has to be in the constructor. So it's going to be this one, the key, we're going to rename it F key is here. So the key is here. Where is that value? Oh, this is the value of the key. Cool. Okay, so it is basically doing base64 decoding and uh, then applying um, a specific handmade uh, algorithm to decrypt uh, the obfuscated string. It turns out that the, as I have already analyzed the sample, like, well, not this precise sample, but another similar sample three months ago, um, I do have a script to do the deobfuscation. So we're going to load that and decrypt, for instance, this string. Oops. Ah. File, scripts, script selector, and well, my script is no longer there, so I'm gonna create one. This again. And I have stored the script somewhere. I don't want to do this one again, okay, because it's kind of quite lengthy to do this A and it's this one. Yeah, it's not very complicated, but still you've got to do it. And I've customized and set the right key in here, okay? So I'm gonna copy all of this in JIP. Remove what is after, save, and execute that. Close, and I can close this one. And we see that the obfuscated string decrypts to com Google Android permission controller. Okay, and if we take this one, for instance, control F2, well, this one decrypts to four clicked com Android package installer rule you and things like that. So, well, we my time is nearly up, but um, basically we know that this is kind of in accessibility services. What are accessibility services used? Well, basically to have the end user click where uh, he or she wouldn't want to click. And as a matter of fact, uh, well, the, the strings here deobfuscate to something about permission control, so probably it is trying to uh, get you to automatically accept a given permission for the application and then do nasty things based on that. Okay, that's probably what it is doing. So you've got all the basis here for your reverse engineering. We learned how to uh, see, uh, to spot packing, how to unpack either with MobSF or you can just go and fetch it directly on um, inside the Android emulator. And then, uh, well, we learned to, um, to see what kind of things it could be doing with the accessibility services and to deobfuscate strings uh, with um, a JET script. Okay, so with all of this, you've done most of the, the most difficult parts of your reverse engineering. Now, if you really want to know exactly what this sample is doing, you've got to follow exactly all the strings and see exactly what it is doing everywhere. 
Uh, but obviously, it's going to ask, uh, well, have you click and um, accept some permissions uh, doing it automatically, and then it will abuse and use those permissions uh, to do some uh, something more. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, of course, I'm online for you to answer. Thank you.